Hello Fast Trackers, my name is Rahul Ghazni, I'm the director of Fast Track Training and today we've got another episode for the Life in the UK test. So today we're going to go through the Middle Ages, let's get started, get a cup of tea, relax with your family, watch this video with your family, I've, I've been told everyone loves watching these videos with their kids because they learn loads of history and wonderful things and just have loads of fun because with a teacher, you will 100% pass your life in the UK test a lot faster. So come and join us. We'll look after you. We'll sort it out. Have fun. Okay, Fast Trackers, let's get straight to it. So the way we go through this is we first do the questions and then we do the, um, the, uh, the uh, presentation and then we go back over the questions to see if you remember. So please make sure I will be testing you twice on these questions. Let's get started. Question number one. In 1314, who fought at the Battle of Bannockburn? The English versus the French, the English versus Pakistan, the English versus Turkey, the English versus Scotland. The correct answer is the English versus Scotland. Question number two. What are the Crusades? A system of land ownership, a type of plant eaten by kings and queens, a holy war in Jerusalem where Christians fight Muslims the day Jesus Christ is reborn. Correct answer is a holy war in Jerusalem where Christians fight Muslims. Question number three. How long did the Hundred Year War actually last? 99 years, 100 years, 101 years or 116 years? The correct answer is 116 years. Very good. When was the Battle of Agincourt and who won? 1415 and the English won, 1415 and the French won, 1415 and the Scottish one or 1415 and the Ottomans one? The correct answer is 1415 and the English one. What is feudalism? A system of land ownership, a system of cow ownership, a voting system or a fighting system used in war? The correct answer is a system of land ownership. What is the Black Death? A plague that killed a third of Britain, a plague that gave people the cold but no one died, a plague that only killed cats and dogs, nothing, it was a fun time for all. Mm. It was a plague that killed one third of Britain. What is the Magna Carta? A document signed by the king to reduce his power, a document which allowed the king more power, a horse which is ridden every year. It is a document signed by the king to reduce his power. Name two castles which are still being used today. Windsor Castle, Edinburgh Castle, Maiden Castle or Westminster Castle. Windsor Castle and Edinburgh Castle. The War of the Roses was fought between which two families? The House of Lancaster, the House of York, the House of Magna Carta, the House of Agincourt. The House of Lancaster and the House of York. All right, you beautiful fast trackers, let's get straight into the training itself. Now, I do apologize to you right now. A lot of the things I'm going to talk to you about, it's going to be a bit boring if you don't like history, but please bear with me. After I explain the story, I'm going to tell you what questions come up on the real exam like this. Again, make sure you get yourself a pen and paper and write things down. It's really important. Why? Because all my students that pass their exam first time write everything down. That's my teacher um, assessment to you guys. And if you want to talk to us about this, just uh, WhatsApp us. The number is below. We can talk to you about these things if you're struggling with history. Um, the Middle Ages, 1066 to 1485. It's also called the Dark Ages. Not because of um, the colour of one's skin, but actually because everyone was in the dark, as in the night time, about um, their culture, history, uh, what, they, what they knew from the past. Because of the wars between 1066 and 1485, a lot of the uh, issues, uh, uh, like, um, uh, for example, uh, a lot of the breakthroughs and achievements of the society up until that time had gone back. For example, uh, in the past, uh, when the Romans were in England, they knew how to make glass and glass making. They lost that when the Romans left. They lost um, a lot of things, actually. They lost um, building concrete. 
uh, certain techniques for, for building large things. They had to slowly discover it. Uh, they lost a lot of authors. Um, but the thing is, at that time in the Dark Ages, um, other parts of the world had collected these, uh, this knowledge and then taken it back. For example, uh, Greek authors and philosophers were taken by um, uh, the University of Baghdad, I think it was, in Iraq. Uh, and that part of the world, they had taken it, translated it into Arabic and then given it, uh, translated it back and given it back to the people of, of Europe and said, here is your philosophers, we've kept them safe for you. In uh, England, there was no electricity, but in Spain, in Cordoba, uh, the street lights, the, 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 the whole um, streets were lit at night and, and you know, uh, people would walk the streets at night. So, it was, you know, there's... The whole part, the rest of the world was in light, but England, Europe was in the dark between 1066 and 1485. Um, and what happened during those times? The English kings predominantly uh, taking over. They took over the Welsh, they tried to take over the Scottish, but no one can take over the Scottish. No one's ever taken over the Scottish. They tried to take over Ireland, they only took over part of Ireland because the Irish were so strong and the Welsh were trying as well. 1284, Wales became annexed and became part of England, meaning it became brought into England. 1314 is the Battle of Bannockburn, in which uh, the Scottish defeated the English. And here is Robert the Bruce and the Battle of Bannockburn in 1314 where uh, Scotland versus England and England lost. Uh, the Crusades is where European Christians went to Jerusalem. This is Palestine, Israel, West Bank, Gaza. This is the map here, Palestina. And they went to the Holy Land for Jerusalem. This doesn't really come up in your test anymore. I don't know why it doesn't come up. It used to come up, but I haven't, no, no student has told me this has come up. So it is in the book, but it's just not in the test. What is in the test is this. The Hundred Year War between England and France. Now, a very quick lesson about the Battle of Agincourt. It's where England was outnumbered three to one. The French marched on the English and were defeated because when they marched the night before the battle, there was heavy rainstorm and the English set up on a, on a, on a field of... Um, uh, on, on, a, on a farm field, like fields. And the mud was so thick and the armoured knights, do you see these armoured knights here? Their armour was so heavy that literally it, it brought, it, it came up to the knees, uh, the mud of the soldiers. And the soldiers had to trape through so much mud. And you see these guys here, they were called the man at arms, which were the archers and the fighters. They could easily, um, they could easily uh, walk on the mud. And so the French had, had sent all their troops in. But what they did was they sent everybody in and in and in and, and it crushed the person in the front. So the person in the front got crushed by the people in the back and the French, um, the French uh, lords and the um, royalty, they wanted to go first because they wanted to capture the lords of the English to ransom them. So they all died in the first go because the English had longbows. Now the longbows became famous after this battle and all the children of England took archery lessons because they defeated the French. The French didn't entirely recover because all of their nobility died. They lost the war, they lost the land in France and uh, this was called the Battle of Agincourt. So those things are not in your exam but it helps you to remember what is in your exam. So what is in your exam? What, how long is the Hundred Year War? It lasted 116 years. Who was the Hundred Year War between? Between England and France. And what was the Battle of Agincourt? It's where the English were outnumbered three to one by the French and the English won. It was the only time in warfare history, I think, where there was more prisoners of war than there were soldiers to look after them. So you can look it up on YouTube. These are, these are the wars. Battle of Agincourt. This gentleman here has got a fantastic haircut. We should bring it back. Uh, if you can't get your haircut at the moment because you can't go out, you should get a bowl, put it on your head, cut around it, call yourself King Henry V. Right. Uh, and fifth is a V. So V means fifth. England versus France. And England left France in the 1450s. Uh, slightly after the Battle of Agincourt, the King of France had died. 
uh, and then they had to leave the land in France. Okay, let's talk about feudalism. What is feudalism? Feudalism is a system of land ownership where the king sits at the top, you have the lords and the ladies, the knights, and then you have the peasants and the servants. So it goes like a triangle. So at the top you have the king and at the bottom you have the servants. The servants grow the food, they work for the lords, the lords are the landowners and the lords give the food and the money back to the king. So it goes up the cycle. A bit like nowadays, you work a job, you then get your money, you pay your taxes to the government and it works like that, it's like that. So you work a job, you pay your taxes to the government, same thing. In your exam, what will be the question? The question will be, what is feudalism? Feudalism is a system of land ownership. All right, 1348, the Black Death. Very similar to coronavirus, but at the time it killed a third of Great Britain and a third of Europe. Um, it's, it's a plague, and it's the first plague. The next plague is going to be in 1665, and we're going to cover that in a later video. Less cereal crops. What does that mean? It means that there was less people to go and collect the crops in the land, uh, in the farms. Serfs or servants versus the landowners. What happened with the servants is that they demanded more wages from the landowners. Why? Because the landowners didn't have enough people to go into the field because they had all died. So how did the conversation go? It went like this. Surf goes to landowner, oi mate, or oi, lord, your lordship, I need more money. <laughs> uh, you're going to see some voices on these. Your lordship, it seems as though everyone in the field has died and I am the only peasant left. And the lord... <laughs> <laughs> and, the Lord, and the Lord says, oh really? Well, I'll pay you a shilling for it. And the serf, the serf goes, no mate, I want ten gold coins to work that field because I'm the only one left. And the, and the landowner goes, that's too much. We cannot surely pay you. Be gone, you poor peasant. And he says, well, who else can we work the field? And everyone says, there's no one to work the field because everyone's died because of the Black Death. All right, all right, we'll pay him 10 gold coins. Go work the fields. So, well, thank you, Lordship. I'll use this money on my children's education. <laughs> um, right, so basically what you've got now is you've got these peasants who've got money. Now, when you have money in English society... Uh, you can pay for more expensive things. You can actually buy your way into middle class or what we call labouring class into middle class. Middle class is now poor people with money. Now, what these middle class people do is they get their kids to go into education. They call them nouveau riche, new money, um, you know, things like that. But, but what's happened is the plague has destroyed a lot of the middle class and now other people are filling the class up. So you have the middle class. The middle class is full of poor people who have worked hard, who have money, and they now can afford to take their children to become doctors, engineers, and architects. Another example of the development from labouring class into middle class is, uh, let's say, a blacksmith or a shoe, or a shoe, um, I was going to say shoe tailor or shoe smith. If in a village there are three people who fix shoes and two of them die and one person is left, he gets to raise his prices up. So when someone comes to fix a shoe, he says, I've got loads of back orders. If you want me to do it for you, I can do it and charge uh, like um, three gold pieces instead of one gold piece. And they'll say, that's a lot of money. And says, yeah, well, you know, everyone's dead and I'm the only one that can do it. So if you want it being done, I'm, ch I'm raising my prices. I'm the only person around. I'll raise my prices. That's that's how the middle class was developed. So in your exam, there'll be uh, probably just one question. What is the Black Death? It was a plague that killed many, many people. What happened during the Black Death? Um, development of the middle class because of the poor becoming rich. Uh, serfs versus landowners because, all right, mate, I need more money. That sort of discussions. And there was less crops because people couldn't physically get to the, to the field to till the crops just like in coronavirus there's a lot of uh, people who can't get to the potatoes and the potatoes are rotting in the field that type of thing all righty then let's go on to 1215 king john who here has heard of robin hood i think some of you may have heard of robin hood robin hood is from nottingham 
the Sheriff of Nottingham, King John, the Magna Carta, 1215, this was all at the same time. King John raised the taxes so that he could get more money to raise a ransom for his brother who was in, uh, who was held captive on his way back from the Crusades, uh, King Richard III. Now, Magna Carta is called the Great Charter because it reduces the power of the king and increases the power of the nobles. Imagine you are a noble. You are like um, Lord Antony, Lord uh, Baroness Elizabeth, or um, what's a really popular name my students use a lot? Um, you are... Baroness Salma or Lord Mohammed. I don't know. I'm just trying to give a really general name everyone uses. Um, uh, let's say that's your patience. Let's say you are Lord, you are, you are Baroness Patience and you are Lord, thanks God, for example. This is, these are your names. Uh, and you own land. And I'm the king. And I come to you and I say, uh, Lord, thanks God. You've done a very good job. Well done. Uh, you've turned over a hundred gold coins, I'm taking 90 of the gold coins away from you. How would you feel? Yeah, that's what I thought. You'd feel pretty ticked off, right? Because you've just made a hundred gold coins, you've given 90 to the king. So the king needed that money to go and spend it on the things that he needed to spend on. He was just taking taxes. The lords all got together and the baronesses all got together and they said, we're going to make a document to reduce the power of the kings. Otherwise, we're going to, we're going to kill the king. Um... And this is really important because the king is the connection with God. At the time, at the time, the king or the Raja or the Badshah was the connection with the Rabb, with God. So the king was the connection with God. That's the connection we're making here. Um, so that's the Magna Carta or the Great Charter, Latin for Great Charter. Right, this is a really important picture. Let's slow down. Let's slow it down. Let's talk about this picture. This is the House of Lords and the House of Commons. It's inside this building. This is the, the Parliament building. Now, these two questions comes up. Uh, I think I've got about eight questions for you. So get your pen and paper ready. The first question is, where is Queen Boudicca's statue? And if you don't know who Queen Boudicca is, go back to the first video and watch that one. Watch lesson number one. This is lesson number two. And I talk about Queen Boudicca in the first video. This is Queen Boudicca's statue. This is uh, Westminster Bridge and this is the House of Lords and the House of Commons. Inside the House of Lords and the House of Commons, you have uh, the Parliament. So the House of Lords is where the Queen's friends are and the House of Commons is us. We are the common people. We vote for members of Parliament. They go in there. So the question is, where is Queen Boudicca's statue? It's on Westminster Bridge. Where is Westminster Bridge? It's outside of the Parliament building, House of Lords, House of Commons. Where is the Parliament building? Uh, where is Big Ben? Big Ben is outside the House of Lords and the House of Commons. What is Big Ben being renamed to? It is now called Queen Elizabeth Tower. So yes, it has had a sex change. One of my students said that to me. I couldn't stop laughing. Big Ben is now Big Elizabeth. Sorry. Big Ben is now Elizabeth Tower. Uh, so it's now, it used to be a, a man's name. Now it's a woman's name. Yeah. It's all right. We're living in uh, uh, modern times. So uh, the, no, <laughs> actually it was renamed during the 2012 Queen's Jubilee, the Diamond Jubilee, in honor of the Queen. So it was called Big Ben and in 2012 they renamed it to Queen Elizabeth and a lot of people were like, I don't like that name, it should be always called Big Ben and everyone else said, you know, it's in honour of the Queen so we should call it Queen Elizabeth and a lot of other people said we don't really care what the tower is named, it, uh, we just want to see if the time is correct. So it's your choice. Leave a comment below if you think it should be called Queen Elizabeth Tower or Big Ben Tower if it's okay for, for the tower to have a sex change or if even a sex change is needed. <laughs> okay, right. Uh, so let's run through those questions one more time. Um, oh, and the other question is, what style is Big Ben uh, and uh, Houses of Parliament? In? It's in the Gothic style. So let's, let's, uh, let's go through the questions. Where, what, what statue 
Where is Queen Boudicca's statue located? It's located on Westminster Bridge. Where is Westminster Bridge? It's outside of the Houses of Parliament. Where are the Houses of Parliament? It's uh, on Westminster Bridge. Where is Big Ben or Queen Elizabeth Tower? Queen Elizabeth Tower is outside of Houses of Parliament on Westminster Bridge. What is inside the Houses of Parliament? The Houses of Parliament has the House of Lords and the House of Commons. What style is the uh, Houses of Parliament and the Houses of Commons? Uh, sorry, uh, what, what style is the Houses of Parliament in? It's in the style of the Gothic style. Wow, it's a lot of questions there, guys. I think there's two more. I think there's two more, but um, I think it's like who gets to sit in the House of Lords? The House of Lords are the, are the bishops, the um, solicitors. They're basically friends of the Queen. And who sits in the House of Commons? It's the usual people, the members of Parliament. Oh, yeah, I remember this. Th there's a ninth question. Um, can the House of Lords outvote the House of Commons? Um, only in certain circumstances, but the House of Commons has the main power. The House of Lords is only allowed to... Uh, advice. Now, out of all of those questions, guys, the only real important question is this. Where is Queen Boudicca statue? Uh, Westminster Bridge. Where is Westminster Bridge? It's outside the House of Parliament. What is the new name of Queen Elizabeth? Uh, uh, Big Ben is Queen Elizabeth Tower. Uh, what style is the House of Parliament in? It's in Gothic style. That's the questions that come up. Common law, process of precedence. Now, this doesn't come up in your test anymore, so we don't have to really look at it. But process of precedence means following past decisions in law to, to, to strengthen your case in, in, the, in, in the current uh, situation. That's it. That's, that's the way the court systems work. This does come up in your test, and I do recommend that you write this down. National culture and identity, Norman French and Anglo-Saxon makes English. Because of 1066, again, if you haven't seen the last video, you can look in the playlist and, and look at the first video. But Norman French and Anglo-Saxon combined makes English because of William Le Conqueror. Uh, and uh, another question is, what are the, the, the um, words that they use? They use words like apple, which is similar. Cow is exactly the same. Of course, imbecile, idiot. No, idiota is espanol. Uh, imbecile. Uh, terrible, uh, many, many words, many, many French words are the same because it's got a Latin derivative, uh, Latin underpinning, sorry. Uh, 1400, Geoffrey Chaucer and the Canterbury Tale. I'm going to show you a secret and you're going to love it, absolutely love it. Check this one out. Geoffrey Chaucer is the Canterbury Tales. It's an old book that was written about a group of pilgrims going on pilgrimage or as they call it in uh, uh, 1400, the English, then pilgrimage. They're going on pilgrimage to Canterbury. Um, first book to be printed by William Caxton. William Caxton bought the first printing press from Italy on three separate boats, big boats. And if any one of those boats had sunk, his entire fortune would have sunk. But they didn't. He brought the boat from Italy to England. And when they arrived in England, uh, he unloaded and he started doing the printing. And this is the first book that's printed. This is the king addressing the troops. And this is a man being killed by one of the troops. And the king is just, you know, he's, he's cool with it, I think. So I don't know what's happening in this one. Um, so 1400, Geoffrey Chaucer wrote the Canterbury Tales. So C and C. First book printed by William Caxton. C, C and C. And if you see, uh, if you see, see, I said, I said C four times. If you see what I'm saying, I'm saying Geoffrey Chaucer wrote the Canterbury Tales and the book was printed by William Caxton. Caxton is the sound you make when you press a book. Caxton. Caxton. Chaucer is the man who wrote the book and Canterbury Tales is the book he wrote. So if you, you don't have to read the question. This is the secret. that um, This is a teacher secret because it's multiple choice. You just go to the test. You see C, C, C. You see? Ah, you do see. Well done. Good job. Well done for seeing. Geoffrey Chaucer, Canterbury Tales, William Caxton, you see. Robert the Bruce and John Barber. John Barber was a Scottish poet and he wrote uh, Robert the Bruce. Just memorise whatever's in red and this will help you in the test. This should be okay for you. Buildings, castles and cathedrals. Lincoln Cathedral is beautiful. Lincoln as a city is beautiful. 
uh, uh, people may uh, uh, may go to Lincoln Cathedral. It's a fantastic place. Look how small these people are. And look how big this cathedral is. And look how weird this guy looks. I don't know anything about this guy, but this is a huge cathedral. Now, in your exam, the castles and cathedrals, especially Lincoln Cathedral, comes in your test, as well as other important buildings such as York Minster, stained glass windows, Edinburgh Castle in Scotland, Windsor Castle, London, the Queen's family home, wool traded with France, Germany, Italy and Holland, and 1455 is, oh sorry, I kind of rushed that one there. Wool was traded with France, Germany and, and Holland. That was the main export of the United Kingdom or, or England. It wasn't called the United Kingdom at the time, it was just England. Now it's Australia. Australia uh, does the wool of the world. Now I'm going to tell you about the War of the Roses. This is going to be great. A lot of people ask me about the War of the Roses, House of Lancaster, House of Commons, House of Parliament, House of uh, York, House of... Lords, they get confused. Here's the simple, simple way of remembering this. This is a gulab. This is a uh, rose. This is the jungle of the gulab. This is a rose. Um, the red rose is um, the House of Lancaster with Henry Tudor. The white rose is the House of York, King Richard III. They're two different um, families that want to become king. The Battle of Bosworth Field, which is close to Leicester, King Richard III was killed. The House of Tudor, and then King Henry. The set of five, six, seven, and just to help you guys with Roman numerals, you have here five, six, seven. So Henry the seventh. This is the white rose that they put inside the red rose. Uh, if you take these two Roman numerals and you put them before, it becomes like let's say we put a one before the five, it becomes four. But this is five, six, seven. King Richard the third is killed, the house of Tudor, and he becomes. King Henry the five, six, seventh. He then marries the niece of the king he killed and combined the white rose inside the red rose. Why is this important? Because he combined the families together. In certain cultures, marriage is a combination of families joining together, not just individuals. In modern times, it's just individuals and they leave the family out. In these times, it's a political marriage. The political marriage is between one family that was fighting and another family and they basically said, right, I'm in charge now, she's my wife, if you cause any anky-panky, I'm going to hurt her and you guys are going to stay in line and our children are going to carry on the, the line of our family. I think they call it plantagenet, they call it the plantain line. Correct me if I'm wrong, write it down, I can't remember the word so I'm just going to call it a very interesting vegetable. They started the plantain line. That's how you can remember. That's not in your test, so you don't have to remember it. Right, ladies and gentlemen, we have covered today wars, parliament, land ownership, black death, English language and culture, and the War of the Roses with the House of Tudor. I want to give a round of applause to you guys for going through it. It's rather boring history, but you did it, and you've covered the main questions. So let's test you. Let's see how much you remembered. Right, question number one. Let's do it together. Let's slow down. So everybody get ready. Sit up in your seat. Concentrate. This is like the real test. Question one. In 1314, who fought at the Battle of Bannockburn? A, the English versus the French. B, the English versus Pakistan. C, the English versus Turkey. Or D, the English versus Scotland. Can anyone have a guess as to what it might be? Uh, you guys got it right. The Battle of Bannockburn was between the English and the Scottish. Remember, if you want to remember this properly, you can read the question in Scottish and see if it makes sense. For example, in 1314, who fought at the Battle of Bannockburn? It was the English versus Scotland. And it becomes a lot easier when you say it in Scottish accent. If you want to try, it's pretty fun. Question number two. What are the Crusades? A system of land ownership. A type of plant eaten by kings and queens. A holy war in Jerusalem where Christians fight Muslims. Or the day Jesus Christ is reborn. The correct answer is... A holy war in Jerusalem where Christians fight Muslims. Palestine, Jerusalem, those places. Uh, Gaza, West Bank, the Strip. How long did the Hundred Year War actually last? 99 years... 
100 years, 101 years, or 116 years. Ah, I can tell you guys have got it. Well done. Good job. Well done. 116 years. Question number four. When was the Battle of Agincourt and who won? 1415 and the English won, 1415 and the French won, 1415 and the Scottish won, or 1415 and the Ottomans won? The correct answer is... 1415 and the English one. Why? Because the French were greedy to get prisoners of war. They didn't realise that the night before the mud was so thick that when they walked in the mud, the knights' knees, they, the mud came up to the knees, just too difficult to climb through. And they crushed their troops in the front by keep sending troops from the back. They were outnumbering three to one and they got everything wrong. Everything. Um... What is feudalism? A system of land ownership, a system of cow ownership, a voting system, or a fighting system used in war? The correct answer is, it is a system of land ownership where you pay taxes to the top and the feudalistic system at the bottom, everyone's uh, um, making um, the fields, they're, they're getting the food and they're giving it to the lords, the lords are giving it to the king and queen. What is the Black Death? A plague that killed a third of Britain, a plague that gave people the cold but no one died, a plague that killed only cats and dogs, nothing, it was a fun time for all. It was a plague that killed one third of Britain. That's right. Question number seven. What is the Magna Carta? A document signed by the king to reduce his power, a document which allowed the king more power, a horse which is ridden every year. Correct answer is, it is a document to reduce the power of the king. Very good. Name two castles which are still being used today. Windsor Castle, Edinburgh Castle, Maiden Castle or Westminster Castle. The correct answer is, Windsor Castle and Edinburgh Castle. Very good. Well done. The War of the Roses was fought between which two families? The House of Lancaster, the House of York, the House of Magna Carta, the House of Agincourt. The correct answer is... The House of Lancaster and the House of York. Very good. All right, guys. Well done. I'm very, very impressed with you today. You have gotten through all of the Life in the UK test questions plus the history. So you now realize um, um, how easy it can be if someone explains it to you. And that's the key thing about this training. It's about a teacher who's done it before telling you how to do it, we're coaching you, we're tutoring you, we're showing you what to do so you don't waste time, you just go for it straight away. Now the reason for me why that was very easy is there's two reasons. The first is when I was a child, when I was a wee child, my teachers at school taught me about the, the life in the UK, not life in the UK, um, they taught me about the history of the wars and Agincourt and Hundred Year War, all these things I was taught by my teacher. And the second thing is, we've been teaching this for so many years, and so we know this. We, we've we've taught so many students to pass, and we've shown them in our in our in our you know in a friendly way, in a nice way, in a, uh, not in a bad way or 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 a, or a difficult way. We've shown them how to pass very easily. And the two main things is this: if you have a teacher, this is the secret. I'm going to teach you one more secret. You don't need to learn these things for the rest of your life. In fact, is you probably know more than an English person who's grown up here because you've studied it as an adult. Um, similar to like a driving theory test, you you actually study driving theory and you learn it to a um, to a point, and then after you've got your driving license, you completely forget everything and how to drive. We've seen that the best students are the ones who recently have done their training. Um, the thing is, if you want to quickly get it done and you want to quickly get this application off to the home office don't sit there and just read the book by yourself leave a comment below get in touch with us have a free assessment and the secret is to ask for help ask for help from everyone ask for help from your neighbors show it to them ask for help from um, your family members show it to them ask for help from uh, a teacher contact us whatsapp us why is this a secret because a lot of students, they go for the test once and then they think there's something wrong with them. Like, not passing the exam first time is, is, is really hard, but that's not the case. That's, it's, it's just knowledge. And, and because you haven't gotten it, you just need to get help from someone who's got it. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure to teach you. Fast Trackers, I'm so proud of each and every one of you. I know you're going to pass. Leave a like, a comment, 
subscribe and press the bell icon and the reason you do this is so we can send uh, YouTube and online automatically send the videos out to you as soon as they're made so when I make a new video when we make a new video when your teachers make a new video you'll get it straight away on your phone you can watch it when you're walking around when you're at work uh, when you're on the, the, the tube or you, you're coming back or you're with your family and whatever we teach you teach it to others help others don't don't stress by yourself communicate uh, my name is Rahul Ghazni I am the director of fast track training I will see you in the next episode of Life in the UK Test. Have a wonderful day and take care.